Maybe if it had been, I'd be a lonely dressmaker in an empty shop denying my only potential customer. <laughs> Get him. The dress for my body. And I'll need some gloves. <laughs> Go, Claudia. The vampires yanot all a mal for more than. What the hell? This is real, right? People are vampires. <laughs> you shared a boyfriend. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to episodes two, season two of Interview with the Vampire. Last night at like midnight, my homeboy Fox Taco, he hit me up. And the first thing out of this man's mouth was, Frank, who the hell is Lucat? <laughs> he said, who the hell is Lucat? Who the hell is Leon? Like, who the hell is Daniel Malloy? He just started roasting me because obviously in my initial couple of episodes i butchered every name possible in the book and he's in the show and he's finally watching my reactions because obviously he couldn't watch it because he was making his own reactions uh fox taco is my friend who i told you all that i peer pressured into um watching interview with the vampire he has like two episodes on patreon on uh youtube right now i watched them they're sick I'm like, oh boy, you're good at this. Like, you caught on to so much, even faster than I did. And he's great. Go check him out, man. He's amazing. He's a small creator as well. We're doing our thing, man. And after he made that joke at my expense last night, we talked about Lestat and Louise dynamic in season one for like an hour like no cap my recent uploads have honestly shown me that that's what you guys are here for you guys are here for our initial impressions our takes like i said my recent episodes i have spent so much time elaborating my thoughts or how i got to my thoughts about some of the characters and like you guys have shown me that you guys appreciate that and like love hearing those thoughts i think one of you even told me that like a lot of people in your like circle don't watch the show uh, you don't have anyone to like really talk about the show with so like watching these videos where it's not just me reacting but also deep diving like 30 minutes in um about these characters kind of like creates that connection of like someone you can actually talk to and someone who would actually like read your comments and like take things from it so so i just wanted to say that and interview the vampire really knows how to start a season because i kid you guys not like i've rewatched episode one the whole thing at least twice and some specific scenes especially the you and me desperate proclamation of love by louis to claudia or or maybe lestat you know like i've rewatched that scene so many times probably at this point like 25 times like i haven't watched it before i started recording right now interview the vampire definitely knows how to throw a pilot and i feel so lucky that i can binge this and i didn't have to wait so i can imagine some of y'all that probably waited months a year and got hit with this episode one like the beauty of it the beauty of louis seeing uh dream stats and you know how that is his guilt like just coming to him like some of you really like explained that part to me um really hone it down the ancient vampire that they found that made claudia happy heartbreaking as well claudia's new actress chef's freaking kiss i feel like she is doing such an amazing job and i've just seen one episode because i feel like they're both great claudia we had in season one she was such a bubbly claudia we'd made sense because like we just met her but obviously that quickly turned <laughs> very dark um the scene that this claudia won me over i mean she won me over from the moment she got out of the hole from episode one but that moment when she was telling louis that i've only known four when he told her get in the hole and she's like i've only known four vampires in my life and they've all and you've all been the worst like her delivery lestat antoinette the mother and you <laughs> that delivery and her being like i just want to find one who is not a damn bastard i'm like girl you're eating like you're cleaning the whole goddamn plate she was amazing um and i love that that first episode kind of focused on her and um yeah after doing my almost 
40 minute long intro in episode one and you guys reception to it it just unlocked something in my brain like doing youtube for like two years now you get this push to like be quick about it be snappy about it people have short attention span like hold their attention and that makes your video like you know blow up more or this that and the third and obviously the droves of people who be like you're talking too much just go watch it just watch the reaction and all that so like over time that gets into your head but i should also have been focusing on the thousands and thousands of people who reinforce it and tell me that franklin this is why we're here like we've already seen the show we've already watched countless other reaction videos but like we're here for your specific thoughts to these characters so like i just want to shout you guys out um and yeah i just unlocked something in my brain that i mean if people don't want to watch the conversation part they can just skip you know what i'm saying they can just skip and go to the reaction part but for as much as you all hear that you just love to hear me yap about these um characters on this show that we're loving and enjoying um yeah thank you um i love sharing i love the reception me sharing and my voice on these characters uh get is very um validating and it's good and like i shouldn't continue to focus on uh comments or views that um not want to silence me but just don't want any of that which there's no problem with that that's why we can skip these things right go over it um to the point of the video you want to watch but at the end of the day that might like make you skip a lot of context from my point of view because <laughs> the funny thing is like youtube shows me analytics and the average viewer like how much they watch the video so i mean it doesn't show individually but my videos are like 30 five minutes 40 minutes sometimes and youtube shows me that the average viewer watches the video for like eight minutes and i'm like it makes sense why some people don't fully understand where i'm coming from for some of these characters just because like <laughs> they didn't watch it <laughs> like did you watch the full video before commenting and obviously that's not me saying anyone who comments or disagrees didn't give me the time of day or don't have valid points that's not what i'm saying but in light of that um yeah i'm here to focus on y'all who um we treat each other with respect both in the agreement disagreement discord and all that going forward i'll share my voice as much as i can and i appreciate you guys for being like a safe space for me to chat i don't trust armand and i don't trust louis something is going on here um with ahmad um withholding information from louis this episode more than last episode more than anything really showed me that like on unreliable narrator and all that like louis getting emotional for remembering showed me that like he's really trying his best to get all these detail as he says like on point um and last episode really showed me that this whole interview because i went back and watched episode one from season one and i'm like the way louis framed what he wanted from malloy when he came to do a retelling i feel like he wasn't being totally honest like because like this is therapy for louis especially last episode him remembering feeling claudia's handshake while she dreamt him remembering everything about not everything but like most things about that getting emotional for the fact that like not everything claudia wrote was true like she could dream and some of you helped me touch on the fact that like that also means that like maybe a lot of the horrible things that claudia rightfully so wrote about louis wasn't all like necessarily true and one of you brought up a great point about like these are claudia's personal diaries they were not made for historical study and all that so it's like it's personal to her we see things differently we view our trauma differently like one man's food might be another man's poison a lot of it is all about perspective 
obviously there are things that are just objective fact but her writing some of those things in her diary might have been the way she felt at the moment where those hurtful things were happening to her but with greater context later she felt differently you know kind of how i feel differently about characters and stories as the story progress with time you sleep on these stories you analyze your own biases you analyze what you're actually looking at in front of you and the story changes so i love the emotions that louis went through last episode and that flipping scene of you and me me and you and him panning to the side and seeing that that's lestat as well so heartbreaking i don't think he was lying to himself he was trying to convince himself right when you say he was lying to himself it brings a like negative connotation that like there's some maliciousness in there but i just see it as desperation for like knowing that this situation is bad and just hoping and wishing that he can convince himself through his words through the repetition that claudia would be enough for him but you know this screen panning to the start shows that boy this is going to be harder than you think you know even though that's what you want there's also an argument to make there that like he also wants the start and he was like actually talking to the start but based on how the story was the scene was the cinematography was done he looked to the right when like viewing Lestat and then look back to Claudia and say what he wants to say so oh god I can't wait I can't wait to hop into this I say that but then I talk for 20 minutes before it <laughs> I feel it's just because I'd rather get that out now than during the episodes more so but you guys are gonna hear it during the episode anyways did you guys get a chance to see squid you can see his little head here behind my mic i assure you he's gonna pop up very soon but beautiful beautiful i love this show i love the fan base um yeah and i love you guys giving me a listening ear as i yap about all these characters that we love hate to love love to hate all of them i wonder if we'll see the stats more in this season or we're just gonna see dream stat please do not answer that let me discover that myself but let's get into it thank you all for watching if you haven't checked out my boy's reaction his name is fox taco on youtube fox as in the animal taco as in tacos uh fox taco um his reactions are quite similar to mine that's like one of my best friends we're on the phone at least three times every day it's crazy um so like we chat about these characters these things every day go check out his reactions you'll really enjoy it and he's a uh, he's dark man he <laughs> go check out his video uh thank you i'm just plugging my homie because he's amazing um and all this time i was just watching that same scene in the background as i was talking so you're good bro all right let's get into episode two thank you for watching coffee is cold my coffee is cold that's what i get for talking for 60 <laughs> My coffee is freaking cold. AMC, baby. Part two, baby. <laughs> to be loved by death. Party. For what Paris means to me now is very different from what it meant to me then. May I try? <laughs> Paris was an awakening for Louis. Paris was a hunger. Oh? I feel something close to happiness when I think of it. Interesting. Paris. Paris sucks. <laughs> Paris. And she divorced me in Staten Island. Paris sucks. <laughs> Boring. Paris was Nazi scar tissue at the time. <laughs> healing. Just as Claudia and I were healing. Hmm. Prends du temps pour la trouver. What? 
What you said is trust is worth several if we take a few years to find it. A little rust on the mother tongue. <laughs> Don't pay the rent. No salt, no mm. butter. Can't have milk. I love that off rip. Claudia's demeanor towards him has already changed. How could it not? After like that proclamation last episode. What's up, man? Bro, if you get on here, you're gonna f the mic and the whole audio is done. You feel me? Oh, Jesus. Please, please. Because you see this wire holding my mic? That's the first thing his head is gonna ram into. Just relax on your little cushion that I made you. You get some b taps every now and then. Oh, this man showing his ass on camera. <laughs> We're not doing that. We're not doing that, son. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um, but I, as I was saying, like, I love Claudia's demeanor has already changed because episode one, she was just tolerating his ass. Like, I have to travel with you. Like, I love you, but you piss me off. But like now, yeah, it's more casual, you know, I love that. And I'm looking for Franks and diamonds. Truth don't pay the rent. No salt. Mm hmm. Do the decalcification and undernourishment. You want Franks and diamonds? Wow. These people are broke. <laughs> they broke as hell. And what's that supposed to say? Since Paris is on the way back. Mm. Y'all got time. Well, now I know you hungry. Tell me what a woman is. I'll tell you what a woman is. <laughs> I love our new Claudia. Four, six, dark. Always following the black house. Black house are easy. Mm. Franks and diamonds. And when we're heaven open up and rain down mixed stars, is that it? <laughs> Gosh. We didn't get that memo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were watching them. Turning 77 this year. Do not leave Dubai until you've made him retract it. <laughs> it was an astonishment. Our skin did not attract the same attention it did in America. Mm. Or sing for my supper. It did not register as a slight in those days. Hmm. That's all he was saying, Mr. Malloy. Are you two going to finish each other's... <laughs> 47 more than he did with Lestat. Oh that settle before continuing keep selling it keep selling it that's my man <laughs> literally encircled by curious and money hungry motivations interesting never made contact with him thank you five months of anxiety ah oh. bonjour or prepare toi à mourir that's where they met for 150 years. years 77 this don't feel right this don't feel right, man. This don't feel right, especially because we saw them in their bedroom. The ending of last episode, we saw them in their bedroom and we saw how their demeanor was. It's not like they're, it's not like they hate each other or anything, but their demeanor was more like, you know, not this. You know what I'm saying? So this just feels like, oh, what y'all getting at, man? What, what y'all getting at? And obviously, like, Louis coming back and telling Armand, like, um, where are the pages? Where are the torn pages from Claudia's diary? Like, he's desperately trying to remember. And him kind of withholding that from Louis. Just my observation, like, why is he withholding that from Louis? What does he not want Louis to remember? Is it something that will hurt Louis? Is it something that will hurt Armand? Um... Because this whole idea of withholding information from someone is something obviously I spoke in length about in season one about Lestat, like holding information from Louis um, for whatever motivation he did that for. So it got me scratching my head for Armand. It's like, Louis, I like you, but like there's something going on here. Ar um, Armand, I like you, but there's something going on here. Like, why were you kept a secret from uh, Malloy? The whole time. <laughs> I just remember real Rashid. Real Rashid. He's cool. He's cool. So Armand had known about them for six months, but never said what's up. Good to know. A theater called Théâtre des Vampires, a company that had been in existence for 150 years. The male hunted to please her. The girl suffered philosophical conversation to please him. Mm. I took up photography. As a hobby. Interesting. Insanity. Killing time when you weren't killing Parisian. Hmm. <laughs> when you have the ability to stretch a millisecond into an hour. Hmm. I hadn't come to that conclusion yet. 
Interesting. The graphs. It took my mind off things. You need a hobby, my boy. Something off. Like a hat that's too small for a head. <laughs> Imperfections. The metro late for him. The brain. Sometimes I want the short answer. <laughs> Damn, Claudia. <laughs> So why'd you ask? Is it coming together random, choreographed? Mm. Let a brother primp a bit. Let me think I'm deeper than I am. <laughs> I shortcut it. You caught me. Take the win. <laughs> oh. Who are you outside of me? Good questions. <laughs> Time out. If there was no me, and there was no him. <laughs> Hmm. Who would you be? That's such a good question. Too deep for you? She had a point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. I've triggered a memory. No, it's Claudia. It's her journal. I probably missed that. Did he mention his daughter? Sorry, his wife. Ex-wife. I think I was too focused on Armand's like um, little gestures towards Malloy. And she tells you she's pregnant. The fishing rod in the head again. And you say? Oh, they're reading his mind. Yeah? Yeah. Louis needs Paris. It's not working on Malloy, is it? Take away his happiness and maybe I don't want his feelings to depend on mine anymore. Hmm. A forever switch of wild opposites at play. So is that a need for independence? From thought? Is she gonna get a hobby as well? Is she watching the woman or is she watching what the woman is doing? A warning and she goes right in. <laughs> hmm. French is ugly. <laughs> Believe me, woman, it will happen soon enough. Oh, you don't even know. Life hasn't been kind enough to allow me that. Yeah. Maybe if it had been, I'd be a lonely dressmaker in an empty shop denying my only potential customer. Risk <laughs> Get them. The dress for my body. And I'll need some gloves. <laughs> Go, Claudia. Real Rashid, just in time for the big meet. Hey. Historical documents, Real Rashid. It reduces dexterity. It's just Rashid. <laughs> a page in the item being examined. Mm. They do not lie, but neither do they tell you a thorough story. True. Who are the young men? Vampires? Those were our young friends. Oh? Guys. Mm. Generally me. Louis has his ways. Hmm. You could tell from his walk, he was an American. Oh, he had that swag to him. There was no way to describe it other than optimistic. Hmm. I would go to this park often. I was an armored thing that spring. Oh, yeah? With a history of chasing the wrong kind of love. I'll describe it myself, thank you. <laughs> Let him talk. We're better to explore who you are to find the right kind of love than in a public park. <laughs> I was convinced we were being toyed with and I could hold back the coven only so long. Is this where they met? I was not surprised to find him without the girl. Oh. Him aware of the ways rogue vampires were dealt with in Paris. Mm-hmm. He looked like a boy masquerading as a gentleman. <laughs> Layman thinking he could fade into the landscape, it was absurd. That's cute. I thought he was going to kill me. And yeah, who broke the ice? Hmm. I will, I will not, please. No, please. And this is what is tricky for me. I don't know which part of this is genuine, you know, and I don't know which part of this is part of their um tag team against Malloy. You know what I'm saying? This sounds like very genuine. Obviously, they're in a relationship with louise so like i always compare and contrast it with um his relationship with lestat like in season one there were those moments of lestat being like kind and like loving to louis that was difficult for me as well because i'm like 
is this moment to i mean more so towards the first half of season two of season one i was like is this moment like a genuine moment of connection or if this or is this moments like part of the like grooming process or like the seductive process you know like louis would often say like he knows how to disarm me you know what i'm saying a good example is at the theater right like louis again a black man in 1910 or whenever this is that you view Lestat, the man you love as your equal but you having to pretend to be his servant to get into a place like that is very like dehumanizing right like as a person of color like something like that happening to you and in the midst of those feelings like Lestat proclaimed his love for him and um and talked about like loneliness and everything which i believe that like he had those that loneliness and finding louis was one of the best things that ever happened to him but in that moment like it seemed like he was like disarming like louis in a way where so like the de the gesture of him saying that like you've basically cured my loneliness and i'm happy i found you like that's such a sweet thing to say to a partner right but is the fact that it was centered in the moment when louis was feeling like so bad about how society views him and like what he was going through at that moment so there's that duality of those like moments so it's hard to sometimes put my finger on which i mean i'm guessing that's how it's intended to be consumed i'm guessing so like in this moment when they're talking about their first time i mean you know how couples do this like it's such a sweet story to share like i often share with um people like how me and my wife met and like people love to ask that question like how did you guys meet so um we met in class in college by the way i think it was a sociology class or social psychology class i can't remember which one he said i will not harm you and i never have come hmm. and bring the petite beauty with you <laughs> petite <laughs> You are most welcome. Oh. Armand. Mmm. She got that dress. Claudia! Claudia! <laughs> I found some. What they, they found me? Found us? Oh, is she happy? Yeah. Oh. A mixture of slavish devotees and overserved tourists. Mm. Of audience from our Anglican friends now invading Paris post war. Interesting. And some couldn't care less what was spoken. Shit. And we felt their numbers in the charged air. Mm. San Diego. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm loving this. Is this a real vampire? Oh. To the displacement of reason. Okay. The rope slip. He's really flying. I know. I was just gonna say. We uh, delve into the underbelly of the human soul. Hmm. Form of art in the lowest of ways. <laughs> Emmy, we assist in turning down the sheets. <laughs> I salute your honesty right after I take my boot from your arm. <laughs> Upside down. And liking very much what you see. Hmm. Oh. Jobs, which is at the heart of it, to laugh alongside your misery. <laughs> Look at him go. So essentially, he's not actually acting. <laughs> not with the flight, not with what he's saying. The audience don't just know how real it is. I find that fascinating. For some reason, it just made me remember uh, an episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I know none of you were expecting to hear that, but let me nerd out a little bit. It, it was kind of an episode that was kind of sad because they're turtles and they live in the sewers of New York. So they only come out at night, but it was Halloween. So like they could be out and about 
because they blended in with everyone else's costume, you know? Yeah, it just made me think about that. Um, but yeah, essentially here, vampires can just be like vampires without too much fear of being like noticed or stuff like that because everyone is dressed for the occasion. But like Louise said, they could feel the air change with the amount of vampires in there. So like they could tell one from the other. I think that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh what are they waiting for everything you're about to see is real but they don't know that <laughs> and they're pulling <laughs> oh even as disgust me oh he ain't lying Look at them, oblivious. Absolutely oblivious of what's going on. Deal with animations and bits of film in near perfect synchronization. So well. The romantic air to their performances. Indeed. The plays were weird. <laughs> From our 150 year repertoire. They were weird. <laughs> they were weird. First time in Paris, I had seen a smile. Aww. Where the efforts to make it all appear as farce. Sarah. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. The only play that mattered. Cause I'm fearing they might actually like kill some humans like right on stage, and people would just think it's like really good practical effects. I mean, they have been referring to them as cattle this whole time, but I feel cause like when the presenter said. Everything you see here is real. I'm like, oh, are we gonna start seeing heads flying or you feel me? And I'm guessing these are actual stories that they're turning into a play. Woodcutter! Oh? What do you think I am, Woodcutter? Oh? Performance! <laughs> no, 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 no! Right. This is real, right? My name is Annika Roman. Is this part of the performance? People are vampires. True vampires. This is real. Calm for you, baby. <laughs> the audience are laughing, but I feel like she's not lying. Oh, y'all up to some shit. Suppose the Reaper had a heart that could resist your Belgian beauty. Jesus. Your husband? No, she, she won't give him up. How about... A crowd member? Him. <laughs> she say yes. <laughs> that is definitely not part of the play. Whose flesh has run in every direction is moustache. She's holding her husband. They'll give you up. Hmm. Wink. He's trying to prove a point about humans, huh? He's enjoying that, I think. I think they're gonna do her right there. My heart is pounding because I don't. Annika Ruman of Antwerp. Damn. Everywhere. Why not here? Right in front of everybody? Conscious death, Annika. Plant. A bride. He's gonna do it. <sighs> right. Do you know what it means to be loved by death? Title card. Yeah. They're really doing it in front of everybody. Yeah. They really drained her in front of everybody. And he winked at Louis. So Armand, this is what you're running up here? <laughs> hey yo this is what we're running up here i'm speechless i'm speechless 
Yeah, as her body. So they're all vampires. Leave it off stage, thank you. London was not made overnight, maître. Hmm. Otherwise, very committed tonight, madame. Merci. That goes for the... Hmm. Five months of night. Five insolent months of nights. Hmm. For you to humble us with your appearance. Insolent. I ask you, Maître, was it worth the wait? We? Oui? They're all vampires. <laughs> That's all Claudia ever wanted. The Théâtre des Vampires. Fargo! <laughs> Playwright in residence. Sam, come, Sam. <laughs> Drums. Thank you. Uh, Tuan and Quang Fam. Projections, sceneries. Right. Rebellious. English. <laughs> Gustave, Celeste, Estelle, and Santiago. You? Santiago. I was, wasn't I? Love the dress. Thank you. <laughs> Are all American vampires as alluring as you? Nah. <laughs> She's like, let me hold her. <laughs> She's like, girl, calm down. Come back here. <laughs> yeah, don't expect me to remember any of their names. I wouldn't do that to myself. The way I um, humiliated myself here in season one. <laughs> this is so interesting. Like seeing so many of them in one place. It just got like my brain just popping off. Um, Cause yeah, season one, there were only four, five, five of them. Yeah, only five of them. And if Lo Lestat was right about saying there's only like a hundred of them, there's darn near like at least 25% of them here. Hmm, or 25 of them here. It's so interesting to see all of them in one place. It's, it's, it's uh, something I noticed during the performance too is like, Obviously, Claudia knew what it, what was going on, but like she was still entertained. She was still fine because obviously Le, uh, Claudia carries that part of Lestat, which like she embraces her vampirism, right? But Louis, on the other hand, who um, doesn't embrace his vampirism or as he put it in season one, he was a botched vampire. Seeing his reaction to what was going on was similar to my reaction watching what was going on like Hey, this woman is begging and suffering for her life. Like, I do, I do not like that, man. At the end of the day, they're vampires. They have to eat. But it made me think about... It's very different. But it made me think of, like, this whole concept of, like, not playing with your food. Like, just put them out of their misery, you know? But um, Shorty was, like, literally begging for her life. But towards the end, it felt, it seemed like she was in some kind of, you know, peace when he kissed her. I don't know if there was some kind of vampire shenanigans working there. But, like, when all of them came over her and just, like, devoured her, oof. That's, like, that's, like, torture. So, I'm with Louis on, like, how he was feeling. Claudia was there, like, <laughs> encore, encore. Ooh-wee. This is fun. Gustave, Celeste, Estelle, and Santiago. Santiago. Thank you. Do American vampiresses all wear pastels? Hmm. Alluring is you. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> he grabbed her. Oh, such a burden, beauty. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> we did. His name was Bruce. Oh, secrets. Threw himself into a fire in front of us. They know they're lying. Ah, with us in spirit, always. Who? Let's start the Leon call. I've <laughs> <laughs> seen that coming. Did not see that one coming. I did not. In a community as small as ours, such crossings of immortal paths is expected. Mm. That husband was Roberto. He had eloped with his enemy's widow. <laughs> Lestat's painting on the wall. The wall. Are you kidding me? I should have known. I should have seen that coming because Lestat loves theater. Well, opera, or like any sort of like performance and stuff like that. Even to the moment when they were saying like painting on the wall, my mind didn't even go. I was like, oh, are we going to find some other like grandmaster, like, like grandmaster, like uh, a vampire or something? Nah, it was... Uh, 
was our boy Lestat. Makes sense why they lied. Or had they seen the picture at that point? I'm not sure. But even from the way they were talking and completing each other's sentences, I'm sure everybody then, their mama knew that they were lying. Bruce. And I'm sure that hurts Claudia to even say his name. You know, traumatic memory and all that. Because even in previous episode, when she was naming all the vampires, she didn't even mention his name. So I think that hurt her that she had to say his name here. Before he did. Yes, Armand knew Lestat. Mm-hmm. You both f***ed Lestat. hundred plus years apart. They were not compatible. Oh, hell. <laughs> you shared a boyfriend. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Even had an aerobic evening with Twan and Quang Pham in the back row of a cinema watching. God damn! Done thinking. Uh, bring me the tequila and some popcorn. <laughs> 300 something. It's a Univision night. <laughs> He's enjoying this too much. Lies got some truth to him, and that's the only other vampire on here. Mm hmm. But there they were, inviting us back five minutes later. Quick thinking. So anything other than I want to lick these two. So we need to stay away from Estelle if we can. <laughs> because I want to go back, Louis. Are you crazy? What about the play? Mm-hmm. Tell me you did not feel pride. I did not feel Damn. Past your empathy for that woman. Past your fear of being exposed. Mm. And they shamed us because we never felt that way and we fucking should. Mm. I want more. It's not safe there. Perspective. Other than your own lust. You felt my lust? Arma? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got your ass. <laughs> Slapping hands feel like, so thank you for that. Ah, Claudia. Yo, Claudia is eating this whole season, man. <laughs> Her delivery. <laughs> She's eating this whole season. And I feel my conversation with my homie Taco has, um, because he takes a very objective view a lot of times that I feel like is harder for me based on my own lived experience and my perspective towards looking at these characters and their um, characteristics and their doings. Because um, even on the phone last night, he's like, hey, man, Frank, it might be harsh because we're talking about what um, in episode three, season one, like after Claudia accidentally, you know, drained her boyfriend and Lestat's attitude towards it, towards her and like making her watch and the lessons he was teaching her and how in that moment, all I could feel was like, bro, like this is very harsh. And obviously we saw repercussions of that and like everything she went through and the self-harm that came after that and all that. And but his in, his view at that same moment was like uh he wasn't wrong like he wasn't lying like before he changed her like he told louis like this would be a bad idea like louis begged him to change her and um he essentially was teaching her a lesson like don't get connected to humans this is what happens when you get connected to humans and he was like harsh as it might be like he was trying to raise a vampire and it really got me thinking about like i feel like i can do both like talk about these characters in the way i see them and their attitudes and their behaviors and also like understand what claudia is trying to say here about vampire pride about how she feels safe she feels seen because yes even though they see themselves above humans like they're excluded from humanity they're like hated by humanity except some of the weirdo freaks kind of like us who love <laughs> vampire stories and things about vampires right um so yeah i just thought about that while hearing her saying she wants to go back that the only thing she fears from that people is just them wanting to bang them which is not really a fear i mean based on everything she said in episode one that like i just want to meet a vampire that is not a flipping bastard um and all that and him and her really prying into Louis and said, what did you feel during that moment? I bet you felt joy. You felt some kind of bliss past her agony and all that. Oof. Looking at these uh, things through the eyes of monsters sometimes just makes you go like, I get it, but WTF. You know what I'm saying? But obviously I like Louis also standing on business. Like 
You could also call this him not wanting to admit that because admitting that he enjoys stuff like that, maybe in his head is like admitting that means Lestat won. Like Lestat got his way to him. And like, you know, meaning like he's more like Lestat, which that might be something he don't want mentally. But yeah, Claudia's delivery and everything, chef's kiss, she's eating. She needs that. Came from a law firm with an address in the Marais, Roger and Associates. Boy, you should have burnt him, man. That's my whole thing, bro. Like, this was going to come back and bite you in the ass, man. You should have lit that motherfucker up. I understand the love and passion in the moment took over him. I had some work in Europe. I had lost my American passport. That's old. I'm in the process of... I'm here to know if you've heard him. Hmm. If that delivery, even that delivery. When we posted civil wise for him, uh, for a party he was throwing. That party. And I know what you meant to our cherished client, Monsieur de Lyonco. Huh. You say, you said meant? Confirmation. And cannot declare him legally dead for years. Hmm. Seeing as you are now here in Paris. Oh? That's instructed in case of, uh, well. No way. Let's start let. I have a client arriving in 20 minutes. You may have the office. Let's start left something for him in case something happened. Are you ready for this, Louis? Hmm. Did he see it coming? Sure you're ready for this? <laughs> He's right there. Hmm. Well, in Louis' head. In the event that you are reading this, something dreadful has occurred. Hmm. The fact that we both now exist in two different worlds. Hmm. Seeking revenge on the person or persons who did this. Do not give them the satisfaction of the hunt. Hmm. Let treachery eat away at them from within. Interesting. Know only this, mon cher. You are the only being I trust. Wow. Above and beyond myself. I was gonna eat him up. All my love belongs to you. Hmm. A veil will not forever separate our union, but it is a thin veil. Mm. And I'm always on the other side. Face pressed up against your longing. Damn. Le start de Lyoncourt. And that is one of the tragedies of it all. Lestat really loved this man. He really loved this man. That's the tragedy of it all. Same thing with um, season one, episode five of him dropping him from the sky, anything for you, which obviously therein lies the issue, how he went about his love and showing his love and all the things he did to achieve slash show that love. That's why it's freaking tragic. Cause it's like, and obviously I made commentary at the beginning of last episode about not centering the abuser in the situation centering the victims first when they're okay we can then talk about the abuser because mental health is important all that good stuff all that good stuff matters he loves louis is all the ways that he went about it desperately and i and i said i made an example with i'm bringing up again just because it arose but i made an example with a movie i watched recently titanic jack and rose and I brought up this idea of Rose's betrothed, the guy she was supposed to marry, how he was arrogant, brashful, but in a lot of ways, in his eyes, he thought he was doing everything he could to win Rose's heart over, giving her gifts, being this massive authority figure. That's probably what he was thought that like women love or like women control subjugation and all that. That's why he couldn't understand how someone like Jack 
who didn't have any of that was able to like easily win her heart over in a couple of minutes, you know, and him throwing, he even gave her a diamond from, I don't know, one of the uh, Roman numeral number kings or queens of France, like gave her this expensive diamond that's basically priceless. And that's why his head was breaking like, that's why he turned into violence as well, like with his gun. I don't know if you guys have seen Titanic or I'm spoiling it, but chasing them down, trying to kill both of them because he's like, I can't comprehend this. And if I can't have you, nobody can kind of energy. But this letter right here, again, I always love when Lestat is um, normal with his show of affection. Um, a good example is episode three. When after Louis was going through what he was going through, losing his family, he bought some suits and they were going to go see a show. And he told Louis that like, I've been, um, I've neglected our romance for so long and got him that gift. And like, that's something beautiful to see your partner do for you. But again, that's the sad part. It goes side, and side by side with the abuse. It goes side by side with the, yeah with all the dark stuff that comes with it like that letter beautiful the sentiment the whole thing about the thin veil and he'll always be on the other side and it's so interesting that he doesn't see lestat like in a bloody mess like he sees lestat with his beautiful suit green tie long hair i love the fact that sam reed left let his hair grow in this season i don't know if you guys noticed that you probably did um because i saw him in some interviews and his hair was just like luscious and after watching episode one i went back and watched some episode of season one and i was like oh i love the long hair it's like a couple of inches longer yeah i think it's interesting that he's seen this list out here um not the not the bloodied up one alice is in her third trimester she steps in gum on the corner of blue palatine and oh all the crap have at it you worked so hard hmm. That's good. just at the right moment to surprise her. which i did louis finally asked her to marry you louis you're playing dirty at recess danny i'll ask for a third time nah man why are they why are they messing with him like this and yes let's give some accountability where it's due like let's give some accountability where it's due um Malloy do does that, um, making jokes, sometimes prying. But we have also seen Malloy connect with Louis when Louis is being like really vulnerable. You know, especially last episode when he was thanking him for like helping him remember. And Malloy was like, we can take that break now if you want. And Louis was like, no, I want this. So like, we know that like when Malloy doesn't smell BS... He's there with you the whole way. Kind of like in episode two, when they both bonded about the uh, dessert that um, Malloy and his ex-wife shared. Like that was a bonding moment between them. So like, I don't like what Louis is doing and what Ahmad is doing. So like Ahmad is invading his head while Louis is invading his head. Like they're double tagging him. Like it's not fair and that's BS. Like I expect better from Louis, man. But I feel like, yeah, it's bit better from Louis. But obviously, there's that influence from Assad as well in there. Because, like, Assad was the one who brought it up last episode that, hey, man, let's tag the team this man like we always do. So I don't like I don't like what both of them are doing right now, man. Oh, they're playing dirty. They're playing dirty. Because if we're talking about what Malloy did against, like, Yes, there are moments where you joke. There are moments where you don't joke. And this is a sensitive area. He was pushed to the wall. And bro, he just came back exploding at like some of his deep, dark, like traumas with his ex-wife. It's like, bro, mm -mm, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that one bit. When you finally asked her to marry you. Louis, perhaps we should. She said no. <laughs> Taking pleasure from that. But she didn't trust you. You hadn't given her a reason to. Would you like to know what she thinks of you now? What the hell? If you're willing to ask your questions and then listen, which is your job? Good. 
they cornered him. Uh, mm -mm. What happened next? They invited us. Oh man, I just want to talk about these scene over and over and over again. That is, f and you know exactly what it made me think about. It made me think about when um Lestat cornered uh, when Lestat cornered Claudia in the train bringing back memories of Bruce just to make a point or to like notch her in the direction he wanted to notch her to. Louis and Ahmad's ganging up here over Daniel gave me that same vibe. It's like, you're doing something we don't want you to do. You're uncovering something we don't want you to uncover. So we're going to bring up these two things from your past between your dad and the magazines and your ex-wife rejecting your proposal or some some lady you were invested in like denying your proposal and the way they do it is so like it's so diabolical like what y'all on which this is so sad because like contrast this behavior to how thankful and pure louis was to us malloy in last episode the contrast is crazy because he was crying his eyes out like thanking him but louis you know this is good for you like yes give louis accountability for sure because he's choosing to do all these things but it's like i can't help but feel Amon's um influence in there and before they hop in the comments this is not me taking blame off louis like hear what i'm saying not what you want to hear like hear what i'm saying like he still chose to do all that but like i can't help but feel like Armand's influence there based on their conversation in bed last night because it's like the Louis we're seeing today is like a very different Louis from what we saw last night or yesterday, last episode. I don't know how long it's been. Oh, that is, that, that was dark what they did to him. The leading man. <laughs> They're a biker gang too? Shit. Mm, I'm going to think of that the whole night. As they did every night on stage, it's merely a taste hmm the longer the ride the more intense the craving interesting claudia's in heaven oh she claudia is happy that makes me happy <laughs> Leader of vampires. Live in the moment. They've made quite a killing manipulating the black markets. Hmm. It's in the library bureau. Enjoy yourselves. Jesus. I hit before the play. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't stop thinking about what they did to Malloy. I just can't. I just can't. And I feel like I feel a deep sense of like disappointment for Louis towards Louis. Um, yes, I know there's some probable like influence from Armand, but I feel so disappointed in Louis. Almost similar to the same reason why after I mustered all the energy I could to take a step back and look deeper at Lestat in season one after like people like told me to like take a step back and look at him as a whole and I took the time to like analyze him from a like more took a step back and look at the whole thing and then he doubled down with what he did with Claudia and the train um that disappointment that I felt then for that like oh like give the benefit of the doubt, still analyze what I'm seeing, but also giving benefit of the doubt that like, as this season continues, like I'll get more info that wouldn't excuse this thing, but recontextualize everything. But then he did what he did in the train and I'm like, oh yeah, like this is wild. So it's almost like a similar, not the same, but a similar like disappointment I'm feeling towards Louis in this moment. Um, but again, the story, there's so much story yet to be told for both men, Lestat and Louis and Armad. I'm just feeling bad for um 
uh, Malloy because it's like he's not on their playing field. So that just seems like he seems like such a victim there because like, again, if they're doing these things between each other, it's like, okay, at least they got an equal playing field. That same way I was, I thought Lestat was like messed up for what he did to Claudia because like this whole time he was doing it with Louis. I'm like, okay, my brain, I'm like, even though they're so, so, so years old, like Louis is an adult. But when he started doing some of that stuff to Claudia, I'm like, oh, the vampire now, he's a child. Like you see her as a child, you perceive her as a child and you still do all that to her. So if they're doing anything between each other, I'm like, okay, but now you're doing it to Malloy. Like he's not a vampire. He's not on you guys like playing field. Like that is, I'm so disappointed. And please don't hop in the comments and be like, ha, gotcha. We told you Louis was ass. I'm not on that. Like this conversation is way too like sophisticated for petty gotchas like that. That's not the point. Um, The same way I'm willing to see some good or some light from Lestat's character. Obviously too, I'm open to seeing some shit from like Louis' character, which season one showed us a lot of that too, especially with Claudia's confrontation with him before she left and everything. So it's like, they're all in their own way. So like, if I see anything come up, I speak on it, whether good or bad. But yeah, I'm disappointed in that very much so. And I guess we have another two hour video on our hands. I'll probably every episode of season two, honestly. Can't wait. I understand you supplement your diet. <laughs> I am now where I most want to be. And messing them up in the background. Very nice. You carry yourself well. Oh? I find myself thinking, what is in there? Been thinking the same about you. <laughs> Shit. Been thinking about you off. Okay, boys. Claudia is going off. Imagine her in a body equal to her mind. She's managed to it. <laughs> Particularly skilled at blocking her thoughts. You must work harder on that. <laughs> That'd be great. Good. Offering help. Dominated my mind ever since I laid eyes upon him. Don't. Don't lie to me. A few of the coven can be volatile and quite unforgiving when light. Mm-hmm. Maître is a coven endearment. So interesting. Essentially, he's like, don't insult my intelligence. <laughs> and isn't so isn't it so interesting that like anytime Louise invested in a man or like give them his heart, um, some bad comes from it. From the finale, he was giving his whole heart to Lestat so that their plan would work. Even though Claudia was like freaking getting ready to slap down the coldest uno reverse card in history um god claudia is amazing um but yeah anytime he gives his heart away trouble comes from it again another tragedy of these characters so yeah of course like you've been thinking about dude dude been thinking about you so yeah you're not as good as blocking your Thoughts as Claudia, which just shows how Claudia is such a cold ass vampire. Yeah, essentially, don't insult my intelligence. These people are definitely fans of Lestat and you lied to them, which also shows how much Armand is into him and wants to protect him because he could have easily told everyone else that, hey, he lied to us and they be torn to pieces. But I also wonder if he's going to use that information, hold that information over Louis. Man, they're all messed up. She's living. Lestat will be proud of her. Wow. I didn't know seeing more vampires will be this fun, will be this enlightening, will be this like mind blowing. But god damn it, I feel so disappointed in Louis. Obviously, I'm not giving Armand the same energy because, like, I'm not invested in Armand that much. He's an amazing character and what we're seeing so far. But, like, Louis is the one that, like, um, that's why it's messing me up so much because it's, like, which is sad, too, you know, because, like, 
when you see someone suffer and you see their flaws so clearly and you advocate for them and then they backslide or they do some stuff that is like maybe not in character based on whatever circumstance their own choice there's this level of disappointment and like he enjoyed it you know like he he laughed when um Malloy said his wife said no or the lady said no like he laughed like he cuckled and um our mind going into his brain too like it's not an even playing field that's literally all i can think about i'm happy for claudia uh, finding other people because i mean she has been the biggest victim in this whole story for me so far well except the humans that they suck dry every night um from our main cast definitely her um so seeing her smile seeing her you know all in it it's 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 good to see that she found some vampires that are normal and obviously there's also that racial element in there that i'll always speak on because it's important like these things don't exist in a vacuum where she told louis that there's a coven of a dozen vampires in here and their leader darker skin than yours is like that is so comforting and it's something what i'm about to say is not a if you know you know type of energy but it's this idea like there's just that thing about being in an oppressed demographic that when you see someone like you or feel like you or look like you or even lay like you um have some um kind of like authority or autonomy in a place where you're around there's just that feeling of overall safety it's the same way when i travel back home to nigeria like i can breathe like there's just this and code of anxiety that's taken off me taco told me all the time because like fox taco like he's been around the world he used to be in the military and he's a veteran and he he told me like every time he travels to japan or sweden or wherever when he comes back when he steps off that plane at the airport and he his feet touch american ground like that code of anxiety just comes over like oof okay I know I'm about to start being looked at different. I know while driving, I got to worry about police. You know, all these things. Um, yeah. So I'm happy for Claudia. Um, she's here. I'm just concerned for like Malloy. Like, how does he feel? Because at this point, just stop the interview. Because Malloy has played an integral part in this interview. Um, him calling out some of louis framing of the story him advocating for like free honest speech him always prying and asking those um those deeper questions that makes louis not only remember is therapy for him like so with you guys ganging up on malloy now what's the point of the interview because it would just make it like the first interview you guys did. It would just make it like the first interview you guys did where like there was no honesty. It's just a fever dream as Malloy said it in season one. So now you guys influencing him. I'm sure there's an answer for it. Maybe not a reasonable answer. But I'm sure the story would tell us that. Because like if there's anything I love about this show and the whole of season one is like give the show time without spoilers in the comment section or anything give the show time i'm just thinking in my mind give the show time the show will teach you things give you information so i know that we'll know the reason why but it's fishy as hell and i don't like what they did to malloy god it's gonna be four days till i watch the next episode so i'm gonna like freaking drown in that question now It'll be the only thing in my head and yes the scene the scene of um dream stats uh dream stats coming to like read the letter to louis that was so heartbreaking it, it it almost felt like not as obviously from my pov it almost felt as passionate as louis 
affirming his love to Claudia and his support to Claudia last episode in that scene that I mentioned that I love so much. It almost seems that way. But while that him reading that letter to Louis was beautiful, the second half was beautiful. But the first half is him essentially saying to the person who did this to me or caused this veil to be between us, like let them wallow in their sorrow. And it's like, it was him. <laughs> It was him. And you were right, Lestat. He is wallowing in the sorrow. But when you wrote that, you, were, you weren't you were intending that Louis would be the one to kill you. Ugh. Oh, this is written. And Rice. And Rice. And Rice. <sighs> yeah, that revealed that Lestat is like one of the co-owners um, or like co-founders of their whole art get up there was like yeah my lord jumped on that he was like ain't no freaking way oh i've started to have a light headache i've been talking for two hours non-stop i love you guys i love the i love our discussions uh the way this show has gotten a grip on me the last um however weeks month it's it, it's been it's been something um it's been something and i don't think i would have been this passionate about the story if i wasn't hearing myself talk about it in real time as i go towards it you know because if i was sitting on the couch watching this i'll be ten toes down invested in everything but like i feel like i have a better sense of clarity of everything because as we go through the story i I basically think out loud and like talk through the process and ask you guys questions. And for all of you who always keep it spoiler free, I love you guys. Your input always helps so much. I even when there's something that is in the corner of my mind that my brain don't even know how to put it together yet. Because don't forget, everything I'm saying and doing is straight off the dome. Like this is not scripted or anything. So there's some things that my mind would um put down so that other things can shine but through the comment sections and the interactions like you guys just like help me like take the story in fully and i love that so much a good example is like dream stats last episode like obviously in my brain i knew that was an actual stat but like one of you just elaborating to me how like that is just how Louis sees Lestat or how he thinks or what he thinks Lestat is thinking at that moment. It's not really Lestat. So it's one of those things where my head is like, duh, like that what was going on. But like just the conversation is like fully fleshed out for me. Or like you guys explaining to me with the old vampire in Romania, like why she... Cause I was confused in that moment. Like I assumed what was going on, but like you guys elaborated that her jumping in the fire or making that proclamation to Claudia was kind of like mocking Claudia or like wishful thinking because she knows she's at the end of her road, you know? So I just want to say thank you. Like the conversations are always rich and I'm always learning a lot. And I just want to say thank you for that if you watch to the end just leave a flower comment in the emoji so i can see you send you hugs and kisses i appreciate you guys i did say i was getting lightheaded right yeah i should go have lunch love you guys take care